Now back to high school sports talk on ESPN Radio 94.1. Presented by VirginiaPreps.com. Here's Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young. Hour one in the books. Hour two now. Region champions going to be crowned on Monday and Tuesday night to scope. And already some region champions crowned across the 757 last night in classes three and four. And one of them joining us now, he is the head boys basketball coach of the defending state champion, Lake Taylor Titans. Victorious last night, 66 to 57 on the road at their Eastern District rival, Churchland, and going back for more to try to get our state title. We say good morning and congrats to Coach Kenny Brown. Coach, congrats on that win last night. It's got to feel sweet to be going back to states, right? Awesome, awesome. Uh, first of all, I would like to say uh, I want to thank God, you know, for just being here. And uh, I would like to thank you guys, uh, you and Ed, for uh, bringing me on the radio. Uh, great, great feeling, you know, from our circumstances and where we came from. Great feeling. Uh, yes, and uh, let's talk about last night's game against the Churchland team that I know you've had a couple of uh, wild battles with. They're much improved under Coach Mike Holland over there. They're going to states for the first time in about 25, 26 years. And I know during the regular season, you had beaten them uh, both times. I know the first time was close, second time a blowout. Were you a little bit, I wouldn't say nervous because you know you're going on to states, it's not a win or go home game, but also worried you're playing them in their gym for a region championship? Well, well, um, I, I don't think we were uh, nervous, Matt. I, I think that, you know, us being there, um, you know, in the last uh, two out of the three years, um, we knew uh, what was at stake. And um, we've been playing well on the road. So we really, you know, as funny as it sounds, we really wanted to continue to be on the road, you know, because we've been battle tested. And we like to look at it like we're against the odds. But, our program knew that that was a very important game last night because if you win that, you get uh, two games. If you continue to win, you get two super seed games, quarterfinals and six. That Churchland had to make uh, uh, we're in and we're happy whether we win or lose, but that wasn't the case at all. They played very, very well. Hey, hey, Kenny, Coach Young here. Hey, congrats on to this point. I know you're not done, but uh, you. you know, looking at you guys early in the year, the young squad struggling to find an identity, and as you just said, and I feel it. I feel your emotion. It's such such a great feeling to be in, and and the way I always say, man, the champ, the champ should go back and be able to defend. Still got to get through some people, but we feel good for you. But I, you got to talk about this kid. It looks like he's been the horse you've been riding all year, and he's really brought things together. Uh, Zydrell Mitchell. Big game last night, 31 points. Let, let's start with him and then go right into some of your other guys that have been uh, really doing the job for you this year. Um, you know, Zyrell Mitchell, uh, guys, uh, you know, I'll tell you that, you know, um, it's hard, you know, it's hard to, uh, you know, to compare him against, uh, uh, with different guys. But you look at Darion Seaburn last year, uh, what an outstanding year that had a lot of firepower with him, you know, that just committed to uh, NC State. But this young man, Zyrell Mitchell, you know, um, um, I haven't seen anything like it, you know, in a long time. And I've been around basketball. I played basketball. But the way this guy can create shots for himself and control games is is just uh, uh, it's fascinating. I'm, you know, I'm kind of in awe every time that uh, – you know, he's in the open floor. Um, and, and, and to have a new team, guys, you know, uh, with nobody with uh, varsity experience in that first semester, you know, starting out with just eight players and playing only six players in a tough Eastern district. And we fared well, you know, other than the Maury game and the uh, L.C. Burry game, which two good teams beat us pretty good. But other than that, we were in every game, and it's it's – you know, according, you know, of course, the, um, um, you know, with the uh, supporting cast. But when you got ex- inexperience like that and Zyrell Mitchell playing second semester and what he's doing now a whole year on this belt is phenomenal. I mean, just outstanding. Uh, phenomenal. Well, and Coach, to, to piggyback, 
lose literally from last year's team three scholarship players in Sebron is going to NC State as you mentioned Joe Bryant now at Norfolk State having a good freshman season and Jalen Jordan a division two level Francis Marinaire and uh, some other key parts with Tyquan McNair um, the twins Tyler and Tyrone Washington I mean this was a brand new team and, and you had to wait for a couple of guys that the semester break had to wait for Malik Newton from football so really you were almost in a way dare I say handcuffed the first part of the year Hey, and, and, and if you want to call it a handcuff, I think we was in jail for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you, look, we um, we played between four. We played about four games with a six man rotation. Mm. Man. And our style is funny that we started out against Churchland and Wilson with two conference games, but we and then we came back with uh, Norview. And uh, Norcom, we uh, we had a great opportunity with a six man rotation and still pressing full court. Uh, we almost could have came out the gate four zero, you know. So to uh, to 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 compete like that, we knew that we just told the program in the beginning, hey man, just play hard, uh, try to get some wins under our belt, uh, hold fort until Gibson, Malik Newton, and those guys come back. And that's all we got to do is get in the region. Do not let your mentality see the record and cost you just to give up. I said, man, just stay there, guys. Stay, And we preach that all year. Stay there, guys. And then, you know, two guys was very, very young, so they wasn't really playing at all. So we did that out of the gate with uh, a six-man rotation until Malik Newton came, seven guys. Hey, Kenny, obviously when you're doing that situation, I mean, that's, I didn't know that situation. That's awful tough. Now, as a as a, a coach, too, I'm, I'm saying to you, how to say that and then get the kids to buy into it, just how – did you do anything special with that? Is it just just words? Is it anything that you do in practice that um, you can get them to do? It? Because obviously it's worked. You've gotten this far, and you're making that return trip. Well, well, what we did is, and I and I and I'm gonna def, definitely give credit to one of the movies that that we thrive off of is 300. You know, um, you know, with Sparta fighting uh, yes. 20,000 with uh, 300. So what we did with our eight guys, um, uh, with Coach Matthews, um, the, the practices were grueling. You know, it didn't care how many guys we had. We ran, we pressed, we zigzag. Uh, they cry and whine, get back on the line, and we just kept telling them, if we can do this and fight through this uh, physical adversity with six or eight guys in practice every day as if you have having 14, then we can get this done when we become fully loaded. So we told them that we might lose quite a few games, but if you just stay tough, and we did it in practice, uh, Ed. Um, we had practices, you know, when Malik, you know, Malik Newton had to get his body together. He took a lot of hits, almost 2,000 yards rushing. And then um, um, so we had eight guys in practice that we that we made them uh, go through dog fights every day. No water breaks. I mean, it was almost like a, a Marine-style uh, type of practice. But we still showed them love. We fed them. Uh, we, you know, they had fun. But they stayed loose, but they knew when practice came, they was like, man, we got two hours of this. Yes, yes, yes. And there's no other way in this practice but to practice hard every single day. So we took no days off with the limited people that we had early on. Chatting with Kenny Brown, he's the head boys basketball coach of the defending state champion, Lake Taylor Titans. Our guest here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. They won their third region title in four years last night, defeating the Church and Truckers 66-57 to behind Zyrell Mitchell's 31 points, also getting contributions from Daviante Tyler, Malik Newton, Deleon Gibson, Kyrie Mullen on the boards, and so many others. It's ESPN Radio 94.1, Ed. Well, now, Kenny, obviously now you're moving into the territory you're familiar with um, that next round, and you got Louisa and Cortland, I guess, are playing Monday night. Um, I'm, yes. ass- I'm assuming somebody will be scouting, and then any thoughts, and I know you probably put a lot of thought into church and taking care of business right now, but anything right. to the future? Hey, well, look, Ed, you know, you've been, you've been coaching for a long time now, so you know 
4 o'clock in the morning, I was up there. Louisa County, I can give you, number one, Jared Hunter, uh, Chris Shelton, Xavier Hunter, um, Isaac Haywood, the Carter kid, Washington. I, you know, I know what they like to do. I, I, I know the plays that they run. Uh, Cameron McDonald from Cortland, uh, Jalen uh, Landon, uh, Shaheen Lewis. So, you you know, Ed, once that game was over and we let I let the guys and the coaches – you know, they celebrate. I mean, the guys, the kids celebrated, but the coaches was on Twitter and social media gathering information. And I've been getting it since 4 o'clock in the morning. The best thing to prepare for anything is to see with your eyes. You can't go by uh, somebody telling Cortland or Louisiana County, hey, Lake Teller is going to press you all game. No, you have to see that because once you get on the court, it's going to be a different feel. So I've been doing homework. Um, I, I think I finished celebrating uh, the regional title at 10 o'clock with my wife, and I slept a couple of hours, and then next thing you know, I got up uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm right at it. And I'm right at it now as we speak. I, I figured out, knowing the success you've had and being a state champion, you you got to know what it is. I, I woke up at 6 this morning to watch some more film on Green Run, try to pick up another tidbit or two, which I did, and then uh, I've been watching so much film. I always make fun of the football coaches, but at this time of the year, you know, we, we never expected to be this far with the squad I have. I thought if we went 500, it'd be a heck of a year coming back for what we've had. And now we're this deep in the run. you got to do your homework. So uh, I feel what you're doing. And, and, and any a preference a, a, as a talking head, I'll say to you, who would, and I'm not saying who you'd rather play, but in terms of matchups, how, how do you look at the matchups with Louisa or Cortland in terms of who would be better uh, right. for you? And, and- and I'll say this without, you know, being, you know, disrespectful to any one of those teams because both teams apparently are uh, there for a reason. But before I say that real quick, uh, Ed, um, you know, I want to, you know, give you my personal condolences uh, for the loss of your mother, uh, you know, to have to take uh, time off. And uh, you, you could, uh, that's an attest, uh, a testament that you have a, a great program because, uh, the coaches did an outstanding job, so that was just like you still be on the sideline. I appreciate um, um, we, uh, I, I know um, Louisa County is, is pretty big. Uh, they they got good size, pretty much like us, and they really go off the dribble. And uh, but Cortland is also proven because Cortland just beat a hot a hot Huguenot team who uh, Louisa County lost to. Uh, in the middle of the season, Huguenot. Uh, but I, I think they, they, they got the same styles. I think uh, Louisiana County uh, probably uh, playing in their home gym got a little more uh, firepower. So it really, it, really, uh, it really doesn't, you know, really matter because we're not going to change our style of play regardless of which one uh, that we coach, I mean, play against. Now, the, the scary thing is, and I'll say it on the air is, if uh, Churchland comes out of that uh, quarterfinal with the win, you know, in the second round, and, and let's say we do get by one of them, that's the team that we have to play uh, for the fourth time. Yeah. But I, I, I think we match up well probably against, uh, you know, Cortland with their three big guys. And, of course, somebody else can uh, step up and get firepower. But with the Cameron McDonald kid uh, really doing a lot, with double doubles, and then you got the Jaden Alet Alendon, if I'm pronouncing it right. Mm-hmm. He's a guard that uh, you know giving you a double double, and then the Lewis kid, you know, with those three guys, and they and they probably got the role players that can help them out a lot. But I see with Louisa County, they got uh, three or four. They got probably about four guys to five guys that can score uh, big numbers at any time. You know, when you got the uh, Xavier Hunter kid. Little five eight kids causing problems, you know, shooting three balls. I think Courtney would be a favorable uh, matchup uh, with this, but you know, uh, who knows? Who knows? Well, one last thing, and uh, yeah, Louisa definitely's got some talent. Chris Shelton's a scholarship kid for them shooting the ball. Uh, any 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 word yet on where your game will be uh, against the winner on uh, Friday? I'm guessing it'll be next Friday, right? Yes, Friday, uh, March first. Okay. Now. We have a, uh, it's not a situation or anything, but uh, the super sites was designated as uh, Heritage, Kingsford, and Churchland with Norview being a backup site. Okay. So 
what what my athletic director is doing is, and is working with the AD from downtown is we are projected to play at uh, Churchland um, over in Portsmouth on Friday, but that's kind of ironic to have two Norfolk teams, um, you know, playing over in our uh, church. No disrespect to uh, Whittington, who's doing a great job over there, but to have Norview as a backup super site less than four miles away, I would think they would try to uh, have that over at uh, Norview High School. But right now we're projected to play at Churchland. And just to get in the state tournament, uh, you know, we'll pretty much play anywhere now. Sure. But, Kenny, that's what I was going to ask you, if, if, if I get this right, because I haven't been in state in so long, but you don't get to play on your home floor, but it would be somewhere near. And it, you just alluded to it. To me, it would make sense to play your game at Norview because you're in Norfolk. And it's always exactly. about, well, they want to know who can seat the most people. But Norview has a pretty large gym, too, though. Right. And then I think uh, Norview has an uh, outstanding situation for a super site. Last year, uh, our girls played uh, Eastern View. And, of course, it had to be different nights because of the weather. Eastern View couldn't come down. But just us playing uh, Monacan in uh, one game there, I mean, it was a great, great crowd. And like I said, not taking anything in away from churchmen. No. Um, but, you know, I mean, when, you know, I don't, I can't recall the last time that, uh, I think it might have been you playing, um, uh, Booker T. Maybe been the last time when they had about, uh, right at 4,000 or 4,000 plus. So I, I think, uh, Norview, uh, would be a great situation. Uh, also, uh, it, uh, congratulations on, on, uh, I know I didn't say it, but uh, congratulations on y'all, you know, playing the state tournament tonight. Uh, I mean, I mean the, uh, um, a chance to get in the state tournament, so that's a, a great situation. Appreciate but it. we would love to, uh, you know, and just that's the reward to the fans. Uh, Norview is not a site like it's not on the list. It's a backup site. So why not let the backup site be right there in Norfolk where people wouldn't have to travel you know, through the tunnels at a, at a distance when you're uh, 3.6 miles exactly away from uh, your high school. Yeah, it makes I sense. Agree. I agree. Well, uh, we'll find out uh, soon here, whether it be at Norview or Trips on Friday Night Lake Tanner, we'll be on the floor somewhere in the state quarterfinals against either Louisa or Cortland. Coach, congrats on another great season once again. I wish you all the best, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Now, one more thing. One more thing, man. Yes, sir. I apologize. Hey, now, last year, you know, um, uh, Huguenot home games was at the Ash Center. That's so right. In the semifinals, we played them at the Ad Center. You know, so why not get the super site here? Uh, guys, I appreciate you. Thanks for bringing me on. I'm at work over at ODU. Uh, one of my kids in my class around the same time last year said, Mr. Brown, where are you going? I said, I got to do an interview. He said, is that with that ESPN radio uh, <laughs> thing that you did last year? I said, yes, I hope I do it next year and the year after that and the year after that, if that uh, gives you a secret or anything about the future. Hey, guys, thank you. Uh, have a blessed day and stay safe. Hey, you're always welcome to come on the show and keep on the winner, all right? I appreciate it. Good luck to you, Kenny. That's Kenny thank Brown, head boys basketball coach, the defending state champion, Lake Tedder Titans, with us here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com. I'm glad the kids listen over there to the ESPN radio. That's right. Love kids. We love the kids. We do. we got more interviews to do. Phone lines open at 757-687-9494. Don't go anywhere. It's ESPN Radio 94.1.